Chapter 11 Svayambhuva Manu advises Dhruva Maharaj to stop fighting. Maitreya said, My dear Vidura, when Dhruva Maharaj heard the encouraging words of the great sages, he performed the Achaman by touching water, and then took up his arrow made by Lord Narayan and fixed it upon his bow. As soon as Dhruva Maharaj joined the Narayanastra arrow to his bow, the illusion created by the yakshas was immediately vanquished, just as all material pains and pleasures are vanquished when one becomes fully cognizant of the self. Even as Dhruva Maharaj fixed the weapon made by Narayan Rishi onto his bow, arrows with golden shafts and feathers, like the wings of a swan, flew out from it. They entered the enemy soldiers with a great hissing sound, just as peacocks enter a forest with tumultuous crowing. Those sharp arrows dismayed the enemy soldiers, who became almost unconscious, but various yakshas on the battlefield, in a rage against Dhruva Maharaj, somehow or other collected their weapons and attacked. Just as serpents, agitated by Garuda, rushed towards Garuda with upraised hoods, all the Yaksha soldiers prepared to overcome Dhruva Maharaj with their upraised weapons. When Dhruva Maharaj saw the Yakshas coming forward, he immediately took his arrows and cut the enemies to pieces, separating their arms, legs, heads, and bellies from their bodies, he delivered the yakshas to the planetary system which is situated above the sun globe and which is attainable only by first-class brahmacharis who have never discharged their semen. When Svayambhuva Manu saw that his grandson Dhruva Maharaj was killing so many of the yakshas who were not actually offenders, out of his great compassion he approached Dhruva with great sages to give him good instruction. Lord Manu said, My dear son, please stop. It is not good to become unnecessarily angry. It is the path to hellish life. Now you are going beyond the limit by killing yakshas who are actually not offenders. My dear son, the killing of the sinless yakshas which you have undertaken is not at all approved by authorities and it does not befit our family which is supposed to know the laws of religion and irreligion. My dear son, it has been proved that you are very much affectionate towards your brother and are greatly aggrieved at his being killed by the yakshas. But just consider, for one yaksha's offense, you have killed many others who are innocent. One should not accept the body as the self and thus, like the animals, kill the bodies of others. This is especially forbidden by saintly persons who follow the path of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is very difficult to achieve the spiritual abode of Hari in the Vaikuntha planets. 
But you are so fortunate that you are already destined to go to that abode by worshipping him as the supreme abode of all living entities. Because you are a pure devotee of the Lord, the Lord is always thinking of you, and you are also recognized by all his confidential devotees. Your life is meant for exemplary behavior. I am therefore surprised. Why have you undertaken such an abominable task? The Lord is very satisfied with his devotee when the devotee greets other people with tolerance, mercy, friendship, and equality. One who actually satisfies the Supreme Personality of Godhead during one's lifetime becomes liberated from the gross and subtle material conditions. Thus, being freed from all material modes of nature, he achieves unlimited spiritual bliss. The creation of the material world begins with the five elements and thus everything, including the body of a man or a woman, is created of these elements. By the sexual life of man and woman, the number of men and women in this material world is further increased. My dear King Dhruva, it is simply by the illusory material energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and by the interaction of the three modes of material nature that creation, maintenance, and annihilation take place. My dear Dhruva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is uncontaminated by the material modes of nature. He is the remote cause of the creation of this material cosmic manifestation. When he gives the impetus, many other causes and effects are produced and thus the whole universe moves just as iron moves by the integrated force of a magnet. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, by His inconceivable supreme energy, time, causes the interaction of the three modes of material nature, and thus varieties of energy become manifest. It appears that He is acting, but He is not the actor. He is killing, but he is not the killer. Thus it is understood that only by his inconceivable power is everything happening. My dear Dhruva, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is ever existing, but in the form of time, he is the killer of everything. He has no beginning, although he is the beginning of everything. Nor is he ever exhaustible, although everything is exhausted in due course of time. The living entities are created through the agency of the Father and killed through the agency of death. But he is perpetually free of birth and death. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, in his feature of eternal time, is present in the material world and is neutral towards everyone. No one is his ally and no one is his enemy. Within the jurisdiction of the time element, everyone enjoys or suffers the result of his own karma or fruitive activities. As when the wind blows, small particles of dust fly in the air, so according to one's particular karma, one suffers or enjoys material life. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, is all-powerful, and he awards the results of one's fruitive activities. Thus, although one living entity's duration of life is very small, whereas that of another is very great, he is always in his transcendental position, and there is no question of lessening or increasing his duration of life. The differentiation among varieties of life and their suffering and enjoyment is explained by some to be the result of karma. Others say it is due to nature, others due to time, others due to fate, and still others say that it is due to desire. The absolute truth, transcendence, is never subject to the understanding of imperfect sensory endeavor, nor is he subject to direct experience. 
He is the master of varieties of energies, like the full material energy, and no one can understand his plans or actions. Therefore, it should be concluded that although he is the original cause of all causes, no one can know him by mental speculation. My dear son, those yakshas who are descendants of Kuvera are not actually the killers of your brother. The birth and death of every living entity are caused by the Supreme, who is certainly the cause of all causes. The Supreme Personality of Godhead creates this material world, maintains it, and annihilates it in due course of time. But because he is transcendental to such activities, he is never affected by ego in such action or by the modes of material nature. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supersoul of all living entities. He is the controller and maintainer of everyone. Through the agency of his external energy, he creates, maintains, and annihilates everyone. My dear boy Dhruva, please surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the ultimate goal of the progress of the world. Everyone, including the demigods headed by Lord Brahma, is working under his control, just as a bull prompted by a rope in its nose is controlled by its owner. My dear Dhruva, at the age of only five years, you are very grievously afflicted by the words of your mother's co-wife, and you very boldly gave up the protection of your mother and went to the forest to engage in the yogic process for realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As a result of this, you have already achieved the topmost position in all the three worlds. My dear Dhruva, please, therefore, turn your attention to the Supreme Person, who is the infallible Brahman. Face the Supreme Personality of Godhead in your original position, and thus by self-realization, you will find this material differentiation to be merely flickering. Thus, regaining your natural position and rendering service unto the Supreme Lord, who is the all-powerful reservoir of all pleasure, and who lives in all living entities as the Supersoul, you will very soon forget the illusory understanding of I and my. My dear King, just consider what I have said to you, which will act as medicinal treatment upon disease. Control your anger, for anger is the foremost enemy on the path of spiritual realization. I wish all good fortune for you. Please follow my instructions. A person who desires liberation from this material world should not fall under the control of anger, because when bewildered by anger, one becomes a source of dread for all others. My dear Dhruva, you thought that the Yakshas killed your brother, and therefore you have killed great numbers of them. But by this action you have agitated the mind of Lord Shiva's brother Kuvera, who is the treasurer of the demigods. Please note that your actions have been very disrespectful to Kuvera and Lord Shiva. For this reason, my son, you should immediately pacify Kuvera with gentle words and prayers, and thus his wrath may not affect our family. The Svayambhuva Manu, after giving instruction to Dhruva Maharaj, his grandson, received respectful obeisances from him. Then Lord Manu and the great sages went back to their respective homes. Thus ends the eleventh chapter of the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Svayambhuva Manu advises Dhruva Maharaj to stop fighting.